Hello and welcome to another episode of our KSP career. In the previous episode, we have launched a satellite or a small antenna and pointed to the moon, but we realized we really need a communications network. So the task for today's episode will be, yes, we will build a communications network. First, we need to upgrade our research and development so that we can have new research. And then we're going to go into the mission control. All right, Gene. So what do you got? Create a network for Kerbin, three satellites. I'm going to take that one. Right, so let's go into the build mode. We have our Minicom Relay, which is okay, but it's not gonna cut it for the moon. We need to do something a little bit more practical. So I'm actually gonna build this sub-assembly, which will be the Minicom Relay Mark I, and I'm just gonna be placing two small fuel tanks, gyros, batteries, antennas. We didn't need the parachute. Uh, let's see, we need Possibly the thrusters. Yeah, those could be handy because we have some tanks, so might as well put them to good use All right, and we want this satellite to be as small yet still that it can be used as relay to the moon or the Mun as they call it anyway uh, then we have the We're gonna save it as a sub assembly and that's for a specific reason, because I'm going to build a launch vehicle that will be launching three of these babies in the same launch. Yes, you heard that right. So, let's save the craft and get to building the actual deployer. So, I was actually thinking to go first with a P re-entry module, but then again I thought, hold on. Why don't we build a bigger module like, or not actually, I've been using, you know, the... Russian so far, so let's build a, you know, a launcher vehicle. So we take the capsule, we take an inverted tricoupler, then I put the um, the docking ports, then I'm going to be placing three of these sub-assemblies. See? Neato. Very easy. Then I'm going to be putting the drogue chute, then I'm going to be putting the two regular chutes, Then we're gonna be building, then we put the uh, heat shield, of course, some electrical, and I only need to put one battery, just it covers my nose, or at my logo's nose, uh, two solar panels, just so that we have enough power that our Kerbal, who will be performing the deploy of these communication satellites, doesn't, you know, keel over and die out of uh, lack of, you know, life support and whatnot. Then we have the fuel tank, Right, and then we have, we need to add, add the engine. I'm actually thinking of Terrier this time. I've been using the, you know, Poodle far too many times. Uh, then we put in the uh, flight unit from the Kerbal Engineer. I know I can make it partless. I just enjoy the, you know, the troublesome of actually needing to think about it. Uh, should I be putting it here? Nah, let's place them here on top, actually. Yeah, that looks cool. At least it does in my head. All right, so we have another decoupler, then we have a small tank, then we have a big tank, and I'm gonna be placing the Marlin engine. Not that it's a reference to Merlin or something. And then I'm gonna be putting two decouplers, and I'm thinking of putting two big uh, tanks, so I'm actually gonna make this launch vehicle look a little bit like a uh, little bit like Falcon Heavy, if you don't mind. I actually like the aesthetic, and I think it will be quite handy. So launch clamps, yes, please. There we have it. Then I need uh, just to correct my staging. There we go. I think that looks about right. Uh, is there anything else I need? Oh, right. Parachutes. Uh, we need to be deploying them in sequence. And then these top decouplers were probably not even going to fire anytime soon. Right. I think all in all that looks kind of good. I'm just going to use Autostrut, you know, to the heaviest part because... 
I'm not a big fan of struts and playing with those, so I just like auto strut till the heaviest part and this should be rigid enough for us to be launching without too much noodleness. Right. I think that looks good. And it is cute and I'm rolling it out to the launch pad. Through the magic of editing I skipped the boring part where you know the days flicker on inducing probably some epileptic shock so I've just decided to save you out of this. We're gonna remove Dorothy Bryant because this needs to be really done by engineer don't you think guys? So Dan you will be my engineer pilot for today I hope. Do make me proud will you? Right let's launch. All right, we have our del or almost a Delta Heavy. No, Falcon Heavy. Look at it go upwards. It just shoots off like a rocket. Beautiful. There we go, our thrust to weight. I'm trying to actually throttle it to keep it around 1.7, 1.8-ish because I don't want it to go too far. Now, the only difference from the actual Falcon Heavy is that we won't be recovering those boosters yet. Uh, I don't have yet the, all the probe parts that I want to have to be able to control the you know, re-entry and the descent. Maybe I'll actually in the future just pop up a couple of shoots on board and call it a day. See if it happens, if it goes well, it goes well. Look at it shoot up, beautiful. All right, we are going uh, slightly out, well, not slightly out of fuel, but uh, I'm just reducing the throttle because we already have the 70 kilometer apoapsis, which I wanted to be 100. And as I said, thrust weight, now it's 220. I'm just trying to keep it between 18 and, uh, you know, 20. Okay. Engine shut off. Maneuver node, let's make a circularization node and I'm gonna immediately shoot it up to somewhere around I'm actually thinking 700 or 750 maybe even 700 mm, possibly I'm just trying to fiddle to make it you know very nice and exact yeah oh come on All right, so we are getting ready. Let's align and we have our burn in roughly 25 seconds. We have a total of 391 meters per second in this stage with some more in the other. Okay, I think this is nice screenshot. I don't know if it will be the screenshot for the episode, but let's burn in five, four, three, Two, one, ignition. Look at the roar of the Marlin engines and the plumes. So beautiful. Okay, detaching the side boosters. They will eventually fall down to Kerbin and, you know, get wrecked. But uh, we have another 300 meters per second in this stage, after which we will have the smaller upper stage, which will hopefully take us to our desired orbit. All right, and now another 460 meters per second to go. Hey Dan, how are you doing? Hope you're liking the episode. By the way guys, Dan is one of my uh, supporters on Patreon. If you want to become one of my supporters and support the channel, check out my Patreon page. I'm going to post the link in the description and in the end screen. So, Dan, you are, and that would secure you possibly a spot or a ride as a Kerbal pilot or something uh, in one of my future and upcoming missions. Now, that thing being said, we are closing in on the almost 50 meters per second and our apoapsis is shooting up. And I'm just gonna gently get it over to 700, hopefully. 
there we go 700.245 kilometers looks good and our main craft has still 783 meters per second that sounds lovely that thing being said all right it's time to start deploying the satellites so the idea is that once when we reach the apoapsis we deploy the satellite and then uh, make a circularization burn using the satellite's own fuel while the deployer goes for another round and hopefully in the ideal case comes directly to the uh, apoapsis that, that what we want actually i wanted to increase the apoapsis to 750 because i think a little bit higher apoapsis might do us good right just lining it nicely so then once we reach the apoapsis do make sure that you shoot or release one of the satellites and then hopefully they we will be circularizing them so add maneuver how much delta v we will really need for the circularization i'm just trying now to guesstimate and remember, we are using the monoprop engines over there, so we do have some delta V, although it's not really a significant amount of delta V, and I'm just guessing that we have enough. Right, so we would need... Come on. Actually, I'm now... Uh, no, I'm actually first going to increase our periapsis so that we have apoapsis 750 by 250 and uh, so that one, one every time we do a third of the circle anyway i'm just gonna be adding the uh, orbital period because this will be very important to get exactly the same on all three satellites including the you know eccentricity and all that jazz for the contract but irrelevant of the contract we want it to be app satellites to be nice and circular hopefully forming a communications triangle around Kerbin. Note that that doesn't always come out perfect because I don't have the precise node or the patience to actually do the damn thing. So, there we go, increasing to the periapsis of 250, roughly. We'll get it there in the ballpark eventually. All right, then just a little bit more. A little bit more there, Barty. There you got it. Perfect. Did he? All right. So, time to actually get to deploying the first satellite. Now, all these three satellites deployment should be exactly the same. So, I'm actually not going to repeat the whole process, you know, three times. I'm actually going to deploy one and then show you how I deploy the rest. I think I'm going to do something like that. So let's just warp for another circle around Kerbin. There we go. Oh, we don't have the communication signal. Oh, game. damn, this game is dark. I have to have a mental reminder to myself to actually increase the atmospheric, you know, the visibility. So, let's activate the communitron because we want to be able to activate. And here there are two others, so I've actually shot one of the satellites up. And in the two picture in pictures you will see the deployment of other two satellites because those look exactly alike. Sorry if now I'm, I've completely confused you, but I mean, it really doesn't pay off to do the same thing three times, you know, repeatedly. So always the maneuver is the same. You deploy, you extend the solar panels, you extend the antennas, you point one antenna to the moon, another one to the active vessel, because we want also to be able to track the active vessel with the remote tech, it's really important. So whichever vessel then you fly further on, these satellites will point their dishes towards it. So that's kind of the reasoning behind it. All right. <clears throat> so 
Now I'm just trying to get the deployer to see if I can increase the relay, prepare everything, set the targets and whatnot. And then once we do our first circular part, we will be, yeah, as you can see from the main Im on the main image, my first satellite does not have a communication signal. I was hoping that the signal would bounce off the other satellite, but it didn't. So that means I'll need to do another orbit and then I will be launching it. No harm, no foul. It's, va it's perfectly feasible. So, I was just hoping if I could get the connection eventually, but for some reason it didn't go very well. So, as you can see, now I have the connection and at the apoapsis I will have the connection again, meaning that I will be able to burn and circularize our first orbit. Subsequent satellite deploys are easier because we already have at least one relay satellite that has the capability to, you know, relay and bounce the signal from the Kerbal Control or Kerbal Space Center. So that's kind of important when you're doing these things. There you go, come on. All right. Getting ready, just lining up everything for the burn. And then we have the burn in two minutes and 32 seconds and the other two Satellites are basically on the bottom right side as already circularized and the one on the top left is just getting set up with the maneuver node to do so. So that's how you show how you make a <laughs> how you make a constellation of three satellites. Note that this will not be perfect, so you know guys, you guys who are perfectionists, I used to be one of those two. Uh I would do it if I if this was a science save and I could fiddle, but I have a contract requirements that I need to meet, so yeah, I know it's a lame excuse, but sorry. All right, and as you can see, I'm using the thrusters to actually start the burn. Just to, I just wanted to check how long it will take me to burn. It says here burn time 0.1 seconds. So I'm thinking, well, that's very very you know small amount so instead of that i've decided rather than do it i've just increased the amount of thrust because uh you apparently you can use also throttle control for those thrusters and they are pointing in the right direction right direction so it seems that i will have enough delta v for the circularization see all right, and there we go. Our orbit is 750 by 737. No, it's not a jumbo jet. I need a little bit more, please. 752 by 743. Yeah, I'm just tweaking the final parameters. Okay, I think I'm okay with that. I just have to take note of the orbital period, which is 1 hour 27 minutes 27.137 seconds. And then, when I launch the other two, I just try to have exactly the same orbital period. So have them roughly in the triangle position around Kerbin, while they have exactly the same orbital period, so that there are most likely not moving relative to one another. That's kind of the whole shtick with the remote tech constellation. However, this is not perfect and of course it will deviate, which I will, which is the reason why I will make my remote tech network a little bit more robust by launching another three satellites, which I'll probably do in the polar inclination, more or less. And those will be going polar, but those would have a little bit stronger antennas, hopefully, that will come in the some of the subsequent episodes. And then the signal can bounce between various uh, satellites, and that, I found, actually makes for a pretty robust setup. There we go. So, as you can see, now we have three satellites. Like I said, they're not perfect, and as you can see, they're not forming the full triangle. But for the purposes of the contracts, all three 
have been placed successfully. Now we only have to perform the shakeout testing, which is apparently to leave it running for one day, f five hours, 44 minutes and whatnot. So I'm actually doing exactly that. Accelerating the time until this gets tested. And apparently it's rolling too slow. Oh, deployer Dan Peterson is reporting symptoms of acute radiation poisoning. Yikes! Uh-oh, did I just radiation poison Dan? I sure as hell hope not. Okay, let's go quickly to the commsat deployer and try to deorbit that one. I completely forgot about you, Dan. I'm so sorry. Hey buddy, how are you doing? I, apparently I've completely forgotten about you. I'm so sorry. I hope you're still alive and kicking. Okay, uh, yeah, radiation poisoning. Yeah, that's why he's shouting on the intercom. Yeah, yeah, he's basically deep fried. But I mean, he's, he's green. Shouldn't that account for something? Okay, decouple this. I'm sorry, Dan. I'm gonna get you right back. You just stay alive and healthy and we're gonna get this thing down as quickly as possible. And then I realized that I have no operational satcoms and I don't have the gyros on this thing, nor do I have the SAS module. Which means I have little to no control over the stability assist. And uh, the Dan is not pilot, he's an engineer. Which means I will be doing the burns when this get things gets flippity flip, so and hope that everything will be hunky dory. So I'm reducing the periapsis height, I'm trying to burn retrograde until I get somewhere around 35-ish. Um, and I have 852 meters per second, so that's fine. Although I must say, with this ball dancing around willy-nilly, it's kind of hard to actually get it to stay. Okay, stay put. There we go. Stay put, Nick. Okay, I think it's around 38, 37-ish. So that should hopefully result in a shallow enough re-entry so that Dan got, doesn't get fried, but uh, we also can deorbit, I hope. All right. There we go. Perfect. Decelerating as much as I can while trying to keep control over this thing ain't easy. I can promise you that much. Oh, come on. Let's decouple this thing. There we go. Oh god, now I have to manually control it during re-entry. Dan, buddy, I hope this is not the last time that you and I are having this uh, flight. Well, that, that's not last time that you and I are doing a flight. I'm going to try my best to keep you level and get you there uh, alive. I cannot promise for the entry burns or anything else, but I'm trying to get, get you in one piece. Look at him smiling. He's so confident in my measly skills to actually keep this craft pointed retrograde oh god what have i done what is this is it god race okay no don't don't point point prograde don't burn the shoots come on get up there okay let's at least wobble it okay we've passed the critical temperature who okay deploy deploy Oy. okay now that flip looked nasty I'm actually showing this uh, slightly accelerated, I mean, it wasn't as violent as it appeared, but still. Should be enough so that Dan gets a little bit dizzy, so I've irradiated Dan, I've made him super dizzy, and I probably will need to get, um, get another diaper for, well, not him, but myself, obviously, because I have been scared shitless. Alright, that happens. Okay, the chutes will deploy 300 meters above ground and 
Hopefully Dan will be able to touch gently, but he performed a very important task, and that is he deployed the satellite comms network up into the space. Well done, Dan. You are my hero, buddy. So let's see. Satellite funds, we recovered the vessel. You have advanced to level one. Congratulations, Dan. You've gotten some cool ribbons, landing on Kerbin, G-Force 4, Mach 2, and all that jazz. And... We can recover the rest, what has been left of some of your component boosters. And uh, now the only thing to fulfill the contract fully is to actually do the shake-off testing. And that's going to be done in one day, two hours, 52 seconds. Hopefully we don't have any Kerbal's orbital so that we can fry them with radiation. Uh, by the way, guys, some of you said that I need to add radiation padding to the... To the to the uh, capsules. I've only noticed this comment after I've recorded this episode, so hopefully I will do that in the future. I'm gonna try to not make my little green men a bit greener. Yeah. All right, so as you can see, it's not a perfect triangle. However, it does seem to be working, although chaotically. And in two hours, we will get our certificate and the contract shall be complete. Hopefully after that we will be able to send more robotic, maybe even landers and whatnot to the surface of Kerbin. Who knows? Or we shall be starting to explore Minmus. Honestly, I have not decided yet. However, the contract is done, so I think I'm gonna take it a wrap for this episode. So once again, thank you very much for watching. Like if you like the episode, hit subscribe and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks and bye.